Well, welcome back to Mental Health TV. I'm Amy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute, and I'm here with our CEO, Peter Diaz. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> and so today we're going to have a chat about some of the things that have been in the news lately, things related to mental health, psychology, well-being, and things that impact all of us in this day and age. So in particular, we're going to focus on a topic that is crucial for, all, for our mental health and well-being, which is the topic of relationships. Yes. In particular, romantic romantic relationships. relationships in particular, because they have such a big impact on people's well-being and mental health, positively and negatively. So and this came about because there's an article out in today at the moment around all of the couples who have separated or divorced yeah. recently. Yeah. So um, Kevin Costner, after 18 years of marriage. Ariana divorced. Grande. I yeah. mean, there were many, but I didn't recognize many of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ones I remember, Ariana Grande, after three years. Yes. And then the, the, who was the Sophia other one? Vergara Sophia Vergara from Regala. our family. Yeah. After eight years. After so, eight years. You know, decent amounts of time together. And, you know, people go into a relationship thinking this is going to yeah. be forever, that no one yeah. thinks that at some point they're going to separate. And yet, statistically, the majority of people that do get married do end up yeah. divorcing. So what's going on here? Well, actually, it's interesting because falling in love is so amazing mm -hmm. that I've seen people suffering from schizophrenia fall in love and the schizophrenia was gone mm. for at least three months <laughs> yeah. while they were still in, in a heightened sense of being in love. Well, isn't being in love a little bit? Uh, another kind <laughs> of crazy. Another kind of mental illness. Yeah, but it's a good one. It's a, it, one that feels really good. And if you think about the dynamics of falling in love, where you're in, on your best behavior, both people are, mm -hmm. um, and both people feel that they're fantastic because they have the attention of the other person. Yeah. And the other person seems to think that they're fantastic. Yeah. So that's that's very um, addictive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but it, 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 it feels very good for your self-esteem, for yeah. your confidence. You're walking on air, yeah. right? And so what happens then after a while that that stops being the dynamic? Because if we knew what it takes to keep that dynamic of being in a in a in a state where mm -hmm. you're making the other person feel amazing and that person is making you feel amazing, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't have to divorce. Well, I mean, how can you I divorce from someone that is making you feel a baby? That would be crazy. I have theories on this. Yeah. So number one, I think in the beginning, all of those lovely things you just described also take time and attention. And we do that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But is it sustainable over time? And I think if you see a lot of people get busy with other things in their life, they're kind of like, all right, well, I've got to get back to paying attention to my work or um, you know, family comes along and that becomes a priority and we get distracted. And we don't give the same amount of attention and love and all those things that we did in the beginning over the course of time. That's one, one thing. Yeah, time. Mind. As long as it's not used as an excuse not to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody has got 24 hours. Yeah. And we, I mean, recently we went to my uncle and auntie's 50th wedding 50 anniversary. Years. 50 years yeah. married. So there's obviously still proof of people lasting a long time in a marriage. Now, it doesn't mean that they're completely happy. But they do seem to fall in love again mm -hmm. after the years pass. You talk with people that have been together yes, a long time. For, they fall chapters. in love again. Oh. So there's something about that that can be regained. And yeah, time time is something important. But how much more time costly is a divorce? Mm -hmm. well, Especially when you have priorities, kids. Isn't it? Yeah. It's about making the conscious decision. You've got to you do it. it. Yeah. Um, but I think when, one of the things that we start to forget about in relationships after we become familiar is we, we take for granted this idea that we're making the other person feel good just by us being there. <laughs> My presence is enough. Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> look what Hello. I have to contribute. <laughs> and that is, a, that is a, a problem because making another person feel good. And, and notice that I'm using these terms, which yeah. are not very popular right now. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, come on, you've got to make me feel good. I'm about me. I am amazing, amazing. I deserve your attention. That is completely narcissistic, <laughs> completely and utterly narcissistic. Yeah. In order for a relation, I mean, what works with me and you, uh, for me, is when you give attention to me for no reason, but because it's me. Yeah. And that makes me thrive. It's like, oh, well, that's amazing. Well, you, know? You, you know what I yeah. think? I was going to say expectations. I think our expectations, again, as you can generally change over time. In the beginning, 
we we go in just kind of discovering and everything's great mm. so but then over time we start to layer on this well i expect this from you and i expect that from you and now that we're up to ante yeah. instead of coming from that mindset of isn't this person amazing yeah you have a, a good point because when we start a relationship we the priority is love always mm. love and when you have love as a standard your demands of other people get lowered mm. what happens with time is become afraid for our own well-being for our own stuff we become really ego egotistical mm. then fear takes over yeah. instead of putting love as a, as a standard fear becomes yeah. a standard now fear what as a standard me, is ruthless yeah what if what if, all those what if questions yes yeah. Uh, yeah, what, what, yeah what what if i'm not being loved what about if if yeah all that stuff that you just mentioned but the the standards get heightened to yeah. a degree no human yeah. being can meet yeah. them yeah so and there is the trick know, is that we, one isn't it we in many ways we're trained socially as well to look for perfect I expect perfection in my heart now yeah. and that's not realistic. Yeah. We would all admit that none of us are perfect and yet you know so sometimes we've got to consciously go consciously remind ourselves that you know this is a person yeah. with their flaws with their faults but I can still love them anyway. Yeah. And, and the same thing with friendships too to be honest. Yeah um, that's where you know, friendships too. I, I actually I heard a friend recently say that which I think is very true. Uh, she says if you have somebody that you like and they do something that you don't completely like you forgive them because you like them yeah but if someone you don't like did the same thing you crucify them because yeah. you don't like them yeah so that's love in action when you have love for a person mm -hmm. your standards mm -hmm. get lowered you don't need them to be and and yeah that's a problem perfect. in our romantic relationships we tend to demand more of that person than anybody else in True. our lives and so that in psychology we call it that unconditional positive regard mm. that commitment that you make to say well whatever happens i believe this is a good mm. person and and i want to rebuild you know what it, I, I always describe it when i'm talking with clients in particular that you know every action you take is a step towards each other or a step away from each other and, yeah. and which is it going to be how you know even if they've done something that is hurtful or isn't perfect or they haven't disappointed you it's going to happen mm. but can you keep taking those steps together towards each other? Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking here from, from three angles here. One is, you know, we're experts in psychology mm -hmm. um, and relationships is part of that psychology. Mm -hmm. The other one is we are therapists. So we've helped a lot of marriages and couples stay yeah. together and in some cases separate. And the other one is we happen to be married and that we come from personal experience. So what would you say that are some of the things mm -hmm. from a female perspective yeah. that need to happen in relationships um, to make sure that the relationship is healthy. Yeah. Or you know, it sounds cliche. Angle. Everyone will say communication, and mm. but it's true. Mm. But it needs to be good communication, and I think that that's lacking because no one teaches you anywhere. No. Right? And, you know, there's no subject in school saying this is how you do it. Or well, how's communicating um, in in a marriage or yeah. different from communicating? Normally, exactly. I, I think it's it's more and it's more specific and. Um, it's more vulnerable like in yes. order for communication to happen of good quality in a marriage you have to be make yourself vulnerable you have to talk about your fears and that's very hard to, yeah. especially for guys because most of the time we're not aware of our fears so, anyway and, and also understanding those differences in communication styles that yeah. are going to exist between any two people because we're not the same um so not just understanding it, but being able to make requests for, you know, this is what works for me, this is what doesn't work for me. Can I, particularly, for example, in the area of conflict where there's been a disagreement about something, how do we communicate in a healthy way mm. around differences of opinion? Um, how do we handle conflict? Because you know, conflict can be a healthy thing. If you're two people, you're not going to be exactly the same. There's going to be. Mm. Area, you have to blow up sometimes. So, but you have to blow up in love, not and, blow up in hate. And have those conversations about when, when we're in that moment, we have the conversation outside of the moment mm -hmm. about when we're in one of these moments, what are our our rules for fighting, I call them, you know? Yeah. What are our agreements? Like we won't call names, for example, or if someone needs a timeout, we'll respect that, you know, and but we will definitely come back to it, you know. So you have your... Well, we have a little one in which we remind each other 
I'm, I'm just fighting. I still, I still love, love you. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so these yeah. things are these some of the sort of micro strategies that mm. you can do to. Reminds me what uh, one of our relationship coaches once said to us mm -hmm. focus on the intention. Not the words that are being used. What's the intention behind yeah. it? That's been very useful because yeah. when you focus on what, what are they trying to at the end of the day do yeah. here? Now, are they if they're still fighting with you? They're still fighting for the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Even even in, in fighting, they still care because mm -hmm. we know as therapists that the moment that apathy sends in, apathy yes. means yeah. people don't give a shit. One of them don't give a shit. Then it all it's lost because that person is out of the, the relationship. Mm -hmm. So while we're, we're still fighting, there's still hope. And we also mm. know that whenever there is one of these <laughs> intense moments, mm. there's always fear underneath it. To come back to what you said earlier, yeah. there's always a fear underneath it, usually on both sides. So if mm. you can have that empathy for the other person and find that compassion that you have for them mm. in that moment and remind yourself that, okay, there's a fear here. That's all it is. This person and, and is afraid of something. Let's, and so that kind of immediately softens your perspective yeah. on them. Um, and you can, it, I think oftentimes it takes one person to be the person who can step up in that moment. You know, sometimes it'll be one person, sometimes it'll be the other, but there needs to be someone who can be the, who can kind of rise above the present moment and mm. do what's needed for the good of the relationship. And sometimes it's me and sometimes it's you. And yep. <laughs> it, it's not about who's the guy or who's the woman. No, 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 no. Sometimes the one that is feeling it the least as a threat needs to step up yeah. for the relationship. Yeah. So that's a, a, an important difference I've learned over the years. You don't you, you don't do things for your partner. You do things for the relationship. And you know, and as that, the side effect is that your partner gets all these goodies. Um, but that's an important one. Mm -hmm. Do things for the relationship. So what would you say that some of the common fears would be? I mean, the biggest fear I think that people have is, am I going to be abandoned? Am I going to be rejected? Mm. You know, am I not going to be loved and appreciated and seen for me? Mm. Am I going to be left behind? I think there's a question always, am I still special to you? Mm. That people have, which in the beginning, we don't have that question. Of course, I'm special, I'm amazing. Well, we Look we how tell the person yeah. all the time that they are, we yeah. demonstrate it, That's we, right. we do a number of things. And attention, yeah. they get a lot of attention, they yeah. get a lot of attention, even hanky-panky, <laughs> they get a lot of hanky-panky. Uh, in, in fact, that's a good thing to say to people, if you are going through a dry spell in your relationship, mm -hmm. try having sex every day for a month. There's a, th there's a process Just try in, it. in therapy. Yeah, there's yeah, a process in therapy. It's a kind of like a homework task for people. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't feel it, just, just connect. Yeah, yeah. Connect every day a little bit. Connect. Go there. Yeah. So, good. Um, I'm just interested, what would you like to know about this topic? Is relationship something important to you? Because, I mean, divorces are at an all-time high. Uh, we know the impact of divorces, not just on the couple, but also on the kids, on the grandparents, on the whole family. It's just so different. And communities, and communities. Yeah. I mean, going back to the, yeah. the celebrity couples that we're, we're originally talking about, all of us, I think, have couples in our lives that we think, oh, they're, they're doing really well, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're great, I admire them. And then suddenly when something happens, it can really A shock. impact the whole Yeah, and we do community. see the domino yeah. effect, don't we? Yeah. Somebody gets divorced and then all of a sudden two or three of their friends get divorced. Yeah. Yeah, that, there's that domino effect. And, and socially, there's a lot of pain. if there's a group mm. happening, it makes things difficult. So, so what do you think? What are, you, what are your thoughts on this subject? Are relationships important to you? Do you think um, being in love is something worth fighting for and, and spending the time on mm. um, or not? Well, this is about you. So I hope you have enjoyed our <laughs> chat today. But, um, yeah, this is a, a, an area of passion of mine, of course, because I've seen how important that can be for people's well-being. So with that, we'll leave you to it. We look forward to reading your comments um, and, and keep this conversation alive. Bye now. Look forward to hearing yeah. your thoughts. Take care.